Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. I'm working with the M5 paper in UI Flow, first to monitor my Ender 3 3D printer using MQTT and Octoprint to send status messages to my M5 paper. Next, I explore programming the touch sensor on the M5 paper. I just learned how to use Home Assistant automations to control devices by publishing commands on MQTT topics. Now, I tie all of this together with buttons on the M5 paper, sending MQTT commands to Home Assistant to control and monitor devices. Make sure to open this code only in UI Flow Online because the hardware blocks for the environment module are not present on the desktop version. So I'm in UI Flow Online, flow.m5stack.com. Let's quickly walk through the code. You can download the code from my GitHub site to examine it in detail later. You see, I have added several rectangles and labels to the UI designer. I will specify the location, color, size parameters in the code blocks, but I need to add enough objects to the UI for all the buttons and text I want to display. I even add an extra ninth rectangle so I can start numbering the zones on the screen at 1 instead of 0. These two functions set up the labels and the rectangles on the screen, and they're called at the start of the main program. You have to get them in the correct order to make sure the rectangles don't overwrite the labels. Let's hide the UI designer to make more room on the screen. Having these long chains of code blocks broken out to separate functions helps to keep the main program manageable and easier to read. Now we connect to Wi-Fi, get the time, connect to the MQTT broker running on my home assistant on a Raspberry Pi. The main loop consists of this case logic block with eight cases that correspond to the eight rectangles or zones on the M5 paper screen. These eight zones will act as buttons and as locations to display specific text information. This is my first attempt, so it's rather rudimentary, but you can get a good idea about how you'll want to define zones and buttons on your screen. You see, I have this 500 millisecond delay here to prevent key bounce. I noticed in early testing that sometimes two button presses were detected rapidly one after another, so this short delay resolves that. The switch on the case logic block calls this function get touch. The get touch function gets the touch status and XY coordinates of the touch. Then it returns a number representing one of the eight zones if a touch corresponding to one of the defined buttons is detected. Note that I start by defining the first zone at X and Y equal to two instead of zero this makes the function return a zero if no touch is detected. Now let's go back to the case logic block. We've detected a touch in one of the zones. In the case of button one, the first zone on the M5 paper screen is refreshed and the payload on is published to the MQTT topic, Shotoku Tech M5 paper button one. You might remember this from my previous video. Buttons 3 and 5 have no action assigned, but they refresh that zone on the screen to let you know the touch was detected. Zone 3 also shows the status of the Ender 3, and it is updated by these three MQTT subscriptions. Again, this is my first attempt, so it's rudimentary. I have not come up with the best way to update the clock in Zone 7 here, so I update the time when button 7 is pressed. This calls the clock function and updates zone 7 on the screen. The online version of UI Flow has the environment module blocks included in the hardware options. So when I saw this today, I made sure to add temperature and humidity to zone 8 on the screen. This works just like the clock. Press button 8 and these values are updated and zone 8 refreshes on the screen. Now, Let's turn on Ender 3 using button 1. See, my smart outlet named Tertiary on the Home Assistant dashboard is now switched on. See, the on payload is detected by Home Assistant in MQTT configuration. Here, M5 paper button on automation is triggered. Make sure to watch my previous video for details on these automations. In Home Assistant Supervisor, MQTT Logging, we see the Ender 3 is connected. 
and Zone 3 on the M5 paper screen shows the Ender 3 is connected. When I press the off button, we can see the opposite actions take place. It takes a few minutes for the MQTT broker to signal that the Ender 3 is disconnected. I see where I want to continue the development of this user interface on the M5 paper. I would like the main screen to have buttons that take me to other screens for specific rooms or devices and controls for these. With the touch function broken out the way it is, it can be accessed by other functions that represent each separate screen. Make sure to watch my other M5 paper videos to fill in any details I left out here. Also, get the code for yourself from my GitHub site. Stay tuned for more, and thank you very much. So, make sure to check all the links in the description down below. Please subscribe, check out some of these other videos, and thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shitoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.